All right, today what we're going to try and do is use our Arduino Elegoo Mega to create a component or a system of components that lets us push this little tiny switch here and turn this on. Now we're not going to do it to where when this is pressed, this is always on. It's going to be a little different take on what we're going to do, but we're going to press it. This will turn on, press it, this will turn off. So it's a little bit different in that we're not going to be using this as a traditional switch. And what we're not going to do is be using this really to control power to and from this as a momentary switch, but it's going to be a toggle. And we're going to do that in code. Now I have everything we need here. There will also be a link in the show notes, not the show notes, but the uh, YouTube notes below that will link you to a blog post that I have that describes everything you need, uh, gives you a supplies breakdown, has some additional resources, gives you some references I use for this video. And uh, we'll spend some time talking about those as we go through the project. So let me show you what we are trying to do uh, right now. I do have a video set up. You can see right here, if I can figure out, if you watch this video, notice as I press the button that the LED comes on. And when I press it, it goes off. So you can kind of get a sense for what we're trying to do with that example in that video. See, we press, it comes on, press it again, it goes off. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. And uh, it is my hope that I can wire everything, program everything, and you can see exactly what's supposed to happen as we go. Now I do have everything we need right here. We have our Arduino Mega, we have our breadboard, which is what we're going to be using, and we have all of our devices. Uh, I will just say again that everything you need, as well as the schematic using fritzing, it will be in the blog post uh, that is referenced below so that you can find out everything that you need. So let's go ahead and see if we can start wiring this component. I will tell you, I've got my little fritzing uh schematic right here to help guide me. So I'll be referencing that. So you may see it on the side over here. You can see it down here right now. I'll put that over here and let's go ahead and get started. So quickly what we have again is we have the uh, the Elegoo um, Arduino clone and we're just going to refer to that as the Mega uh, for now. So I'll try and refer that to the as the Mega. I am going to orient it this way because the pins I'm going to be using are right here. We also have our push button pin that I showed you a little bit earlier. We'll put that to the side. Now these are great because this is a momentary. It's pretty loud and uh, you can hear it click there and we will use that and we have to be careful how we place that. There's a sp specific way we place that on the breadboard. We'll talk about that. We use this white LED. We're going to use these great um, breadboarding wires that actually have connectors on there. Uh, you will also find that we need a resistor and uh, that is going to be used to protect our LED. If we do direct power, uh, it might survive, it might not. This LED will ensure that we don't burn it. I think this is a 1K ohm resistor, so we should be okay there. We also have a pair of pliers, which I'll, uh, little needle nose pliers, and I'll be using those uh, on occasion. And I'll show you a couple of tricks that'll make using this uh, a little bit easier when you're breadboarding. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our components in place. That'll be the easiest thing. Now, again, everything is laid out in the fritzing diagram I have on the blog post, but the first thing we're going to do is grab this switch right here and um, we're going to try and follow as closely to the fritzing schematic as we can and we're going to place that right in between. Now you'll notice what we're doing here. How about this? I'm going to use my resistor as a little pointer. We're going to make sure that this switch is the legs are over this runner right here. This means there's no connection. So a little bit about breadboarding. Some of these are connected, so the, they're in series or the power flows through. And then you see some of them, we have a strip down this way where that there is continuity there. So we'll talk about that as we go. But the first thing we're going to do is set this switch in place. And we're going to put that one right here. Now, it doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of placing it on here uh, in such a way that it will help us as we work on this program. So I'm, as we work on our wiring rather. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna press it down into place. And I'll get that a little bit closer. You can see how that's kind of across that channel right there. And you can hear that button. So we'll place that back down here for you. Let me move my USB out of the way. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place our LED. Now let's talk a little bit about the LED. The LED does have 
two legs. The longer leg is the positive. So the longer leg is the positive. So you need to remember that because it is important that this is uh, connected the correct way. So what we're going to do is we are going to place this right in here at 15. So the negative is in 15 and then the positive is in 16. You'll notice the breadboards have numbers. So that's how we can easily reference that together. And uh, let me move this a little bit closer, but you'll see 15 is right there. And it's a little hard to see. The camera doesn't really focus, but that'll help you. And then, so I want the negative leg in the 15 and the positive in the 16. And I'm going to push those into place. Now you want to be careful because you are liable to bend those legs if you're not careful. And so we're going to put that in there and you'll see that that's situated. So that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing we want to do is I want to place this resistor. And again, I said we're going to place a resistor in line or in series with the LED uh, to protect the voltage that's coming out of the Arduino from uh, destroying that. And um, so this will, uh, per the spec sheet, will uh, roughly is safe with about five volts. Well, we're going to be running five volts out of here, out of the pins over here on the Arduino, but we're going to add a 1K resistor. All it's going to do, even if it would survive, what it will do is the resistance will just make it a dimmer bulb, but that's okay for what we're trying to do. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-prepare this a little bit before I get uh, putting this in into the breadboard, and this is a great place to use your needle nose pliers. What I'm going to do is hold that very closely. You'll see right there. And then I'm just slowly going to bend that down. Now, the nice thing about resistors is there's no really positive or negative direction on these. You, can, you, can't, you can't mess this one up. You can get this one right no matter which way you put it in there. So don't worry about that. But go ahead and just do a good bend like that. And again, the, the needle nose just really help you with that. Make sure you get a nice bend. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place one leg in series with the positive with the positive of the LED right here. And then the other one, we're just going to place wherever it works. Uh, it really doesn't matter at this point. We'll make sure, we just need to make sure we know where it's coming from here. So we have that. So we can go here and here. Now, sometimes on these especially, it gets difficult. And if you try and press down, uh, what you can do is just squish this out, the legs bend and everything else. So what I like to do is take my needle nose pliers here, grab real low on the leg, and then push from there. And that makes sure it goes in nicely without bending the legs above. So we'll do that here too. And then I can just kind of ease it down there. Now, normally if you're doing a circuit uh, that you're going to spend time with, or maybe not reuse this resistor, you may want to go ahead and take a pair of cutters like this right here, and then just cut them down to size so that it's right on the board. But I'm going to want to use this resistor probably. This is not a project that I'm going to keep uh, assembled for a long time. So now we have all of the components on the board. We'll move that back here. Let me get my USB cable out of the way here. And now what we want to do is we want to com connect our components to the Arduino Mega. So let's move this here, get this a little bit closer so that you can see that. And let's go ahead and start to wire it up. Now you'll notice I, I picked specific colors and I did that for a reason. We're using black. Black will be for your ground. We'll use these for ground wires. Obviously, if we're using black for ground, we're gonna use red for positive voltage. Uh, and you'll see where we put that. And then I'm gonna use yellow in this case, and this really doesn't matter. Uh, it's just a, a personal choice. Uh, yellow is good, just going to be a line that is connected to a digital pin. It's, uh, it's something other than the positive or the negative voltage that is running through the circuit. It is a connection to one of the IO ports as you're going to find. So let's go ahead and see if we can wire this up. And uh, what I find a lot of times, especially with students first attempt, the wiring, and especially even for me, the wiring is what trips people up and what causes problems. So I tried to create the schematic in fritzing in such a way that it would make it easier for you. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take care of all of our ground. So the ground are all of the, the black area. So let's go ahead and put this here. We're gonna pop that in here. And again, if you've got a brand new breadboard, it could be tough. And then what we're gonna do is for ground, you'll notice on this breadboard right here that there is a negative. This whole blue strip is now 
ground. So anything we put on there will be connected to ground. So if you connect anything anywhere on there, you are connected to ground, which is really kind of a handy feature, as you'll find as we continue on with our um, breadboarding and circuit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move that one to pin 16 right here. You see, I have that one. I'm going to take another ground and I'm going to move this over here. Now, it doesn't matter which one of these were where. You could easily move this one here and then put this one here, vice versa. I just, for personal preference, I just like to, to put it on this one right here. And now, what we're going to do now is we're going to connect this ground to the ground on the Arduino. Now, it's easy because there is right here, and you probably won't be able to read it too well, but there is a little pin that says ground. And uh, so what we're going to do is take our black, plug that into ground, which it looks like that is pin number four. Yes, pin four for ground on the Arduino. And it's important that you get that correct because the one next to it is actually positive voltage. So we would need to be careful coming out of that. Okay, so we have those two things grounded. The next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and ground our switch. So we're just going to simply come over here on the on the butt push button that we're using and right off of this leg right here. So we are, it looks like at 29, we're going to tie that to where would you think? That's right. We're going to go right into ground, which is right here. Now, again, what we've done is we've established our ground circuit. Everything is grounded at this point. So we've come from ground from our Arduino right here. We've come over to the board to give this whole line right here a ground. Then from that ground, we've been able to ground our LED to negative, and then we've been able to ground our switch. So now everything has a good ground and we're in good shape. Now all we have to do is kind of close off the circuits. And uh, that's, that's a pretty easy thing to do now. So let's go ahead and start by first attaching our switch. And the switch is just this other leg right here. You see that? Uh, so wherever that is, we just need to be in line with that. Looks like this is 27 per my pins. We're going to put that here. Now this next part, this is important. Whatever you've decided that you're going to plug this connection wire into the Arduino is what we're going to be using for our programming. And for me, I have chosen to use pin 9 right here as my digital switch connection to the I.O. on the Elegoo Arduino or on the Mega. Okay, so we need to remember that. Uh, that is, uh, this would be a good time to break out a notebook and write that down. So you remember it. Of course, you can always come back and look. But a lot of times when you're coding, it's really a good idea just to write things down as your, as your hardware um, as you're putting your hardware together. Then lastly, yeah, so we're almost done with wiring this thing, which is nice. We're going to connect our voltage, so our five volts. And uh, we're going to do that by using the voltage out of pin 12. Uh, now there's nothing coming out of there currently, so, but there will be whenever we apply power and tell the Arduino to apply voltage to that pin. And then what we're going to do is finish our connection our circuit between our LED and our resistor in series. So ground to ground to the LED, coming out of the LED, going through the resistor to our positive voltage, which will be five volts when we do it, and we plug that in right below. So remember, this line right here is all connected with power. So there's our complete circuit on our breadboard. Hopefully that made sense. And so this is, this is connected. We're, we are good to go at this point. The next thing that we need to do, though, is we need to create some programming. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back up here to the computer. And we, uh, what I have here is I have the Arduino um, uh, IDE installed. Uh, you can see that here. And um, this is the default. I've already loaded it up. Before we load the software, we're going to go ahead and create the program. And uh, so I'm going to get rid of some of this, but let's go ahead and talk through it. It's already telling you right now we have two areas, void setup, put your setup code here to run once, void loop, put the code there that will loop repeatedly. That's where that's going to go. So at some point, everything that's happening here is going to be part of a loop. And then that loop will be interrupted whenever we push the button. And when that button is pressed, depending on what state we're in, it'll either turn that light on or off. So that's what we're trying to do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of everything just to keep everything. I do have a loud clickety-clack keyboard, so you're going to hear me. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize uh, my variables. 
Now you'll notice the first code I put in there is this code that has these two characters. This is what's known as a comment for those of you who have not done any programming. So this is a comment code. Nothing is going to happen. This is just code for me to say, hey, let's go ahead and initialize some variables. And the first thing I'm going to initialize and INT, if you've heard me talk, you probably know what that means. That means initialize. First thing I'm going to do is initialize the LED pin equal to 12, and then I'm gonna end the line here with a semicolon. So let's talk about that line for a minute. Init, init or initialize LED pin, that's something I created. That is not part of the programming. That is what we call a variable. So this variable is the LED pin and it is connected to pin 12. Remember pin 12? Pin 12 was here, look down on my screen down here. That is pin 12 right here. So that's that directly relates to this variable right here. I don't know why I'm pointing to the screen because you can't really see exactly what I'm pointing. I'll try to remember to go back to my cursor, but that's what we mean. Now, the beauty of this is I've, I've established what connection there is to the LED in code. If I want to change that to a different pin, all I have to do is change it once because it's a variable. If I didn't use a variable and I reference that pin within my code 15 times, how many times would I have to change that variable? Yeah, 15, I don't wanna do that. So that's what we're doing right here. We're establishing some variables that'll, that will get us going. The next thing I'm going to do is initial initialize my button pin. And I'm gonna make that equal to, if you remember, I put that on pin nine. And so what I'm saying is the button is connected to pin nine. So when that button is pressed, that signal will be sent back through the Arduino to pin nine. Does that make sense? So that's where we are right now. Now, the beauty of this program is, uh, and this, this project, it's a very simple project. This is all I need right now for initializing variables for the hardware. However, I do need to do something interesting right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to init, and I'm gonna call this my toggle state, and I'm gonna make that equal to false. Now, this is where logic comes into programming. For this particular thing, this variable, what I'm saying is, I've got this variable that I'm calling toggle state. Now remember, I came up with all these names of the variables. LED pin, button pin, toggle state are all the, all the names that I've come up with. It could be anything you want. And I've tried to make them so that they make sense. I like to use variable names that make sense so I can refer to them later. You'll also notice that I do this thing we call camel case, which is the first letter is lowercase and then between um, words like LED pin, the pin is uppercase. And that's why we call it camel case because it goes up and down. Okay, so that's camel case. That's just good programming practice to help you quickly recognize that code. So look, going back to line five right here, you'll notice I have initialize or init toggle state equal false. So what I'm saying is the current state of that toggle is off. Nothing's happening. Nothing has happened. It's just a, a zero. If we think about it as binary one and zero, true and false, this is false, that's equal to zero. Got it? Everybody with me? That'll come into play a little bit in our code and I think you'll see what we mean. So now I'm going to go to the end of that line. Now that initializes our variables. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to um, what I call uh, configure our devices. And I'll go ahead and put in a little uh, comment in there so that we know that. And now we're gonna go back even to kind of that code that came up in the default. So we're gonna do void and we're going to do setup and then we're going to open and close parentheses. Now, when we do that, we are also going to need to do a bracket right here. And when we do that, you'll notice that it automatically creates the close bracket. Brackets and parentheses, it's very important. When you open them, you close them. And some of the, uh, the, the best programs can get messed up and uh, the troubleshooting can get the hardest when you find that you haven't opened and closed the same number. Sometimes you've opened parentheses a couple of times because you've got a lot of embedded code and you didn't close exactly the number. Now, the Arduino IDE is pretty good at letting you know that, uh, where that is, but it doesn't always do the best job. So let's go into our void setup. And the first thing I'm going to do, and I want you to think of the void setup as an area where commands happen once. So they are Arduino IDE commands, but they're commands that are going to happen just once. So the program is going to initialize the variables up here in this area. 
Then it's going to come down and it's going to do these things once. Okay. Then afterwards, then we're going to get into a loop that continually loops to do things. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to set up our pen mode for LED pen as an output device. And you'll notice there are some things there we need to talk about. So pen node, what you pen mode, what you notice initially after I type that is look at the color. It's in red. Okay. This is a command built into the Arduino IDE. So we're saying the pen mode for LED pen. What's that? Well, LED pen, we go back to our variables, that's pen 12. So we're saying the pen mode on pen 12 is an all uppercase output device. Does that make sense? An LED is an output device. Output. It outputs light. Let's look at it that way. So keep that in mind. So all we're doing is we're saying set up that pen so that it's an output device. Because you can also set things to be input devices. A switch, for instance, in our example down here, this would be an example of an input device. You press it and you get an input to your program code. So uh, some analogies to computers, uh, a computer and input devices like my clickety clackety keyboard you hear here, and then the output device would be your monitor uh, so that I can see what's happening on the screen. Does that make sense? Let's do another one. So let's do pin mode. And uh, obviously if you don't type it right, you don't get your uh, red. So that's a good key. If, you're, if you think things should be highlighted in red, you probably mistyped something. And then the next one that we're going to do is our button pin. Remember the button pin? That's up here. So that's going to be nine. Button pin is connected to nine. And then we're going to do input. Now we are going to do something here that you're not going to see in a lot uh, of initial tutorials, but I want you to know this immediately. That button would work um, as is, but not well. So let me talk about that. So the way it is now, that button has it, it, it is a, a subjective to I'm trying to make this is just think a lot of interference interference can affect that button uh, there's a lot of static there's a lot of stuff going around in our circuit and around in our rooms that that input on that IO is not a consistent uh, measure uh, sometimes if we didn't have um, if we just use the button by itself then it would give us false triggers. So it would false press itself, which seems kind of odd, but you can do some research on Google to find out why that is, has, has to do with a lot of the interference around you. So what a lot of people do is when they go back to here, and let me, let me go ahead and click. If they were to wire this circuit, they would in line with this circuit, put something in there called a pull-up resistor, a pull-up resistor. Now, what all you need to know right now about the pull-up resistor is that the pull-up resistor would get rid of that interference. Now, you'll notice I do not have a resistor wired in series with that button to get rid of that because newer Arduinos have this really cool thing built in. They have a built-in pull-up resistor that's built into the hardware on the board for the I.O. ports. I just learned this right before I prepared this video. I got to say, this is brilliant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, um, I'm going to add an underscore and I'm going to do pull up. Now you'll notice it turns green, which means it's a valid command. I'm going to close my uh, parentheses and I'm going to end it one more time with a semicolon. All right. So that stops us from having to add an additional piece of hardware to our circuit down here. And before, when I did this originally, I, I had my resistor here for my LED to pr protect the LED. And then I had a resistor in here, which was a pull-up resistor, so that this would act the way it's supposed to act. So really excited to learn about this uh, pull-up feature within the input command. No way to do that with the LED. Uh, that, that's not gonna work. Uh, the pull-up resistor is just a way to, to get rid of the interference, okay? So now we've got everything set up. We've said our pin, our LED pin, which is on 12, is now an output device. And our button pin on pin nine is now an input device with a pull-up resistor to make sure it works consistently. Okay, so everything is set up there. Now what we're going to do is we are going to void and we're going to loop and we're going to do our open and close and then we're going to do our bracket again and hit enter and now that starts our loop now here's what happens everything that's happened above has been executed it is done we're done with it nothing else is going to happen with that code up above 
once it goes through and initializes these variables, sets up those pins, we are done. Everything else that's going to happen is going to happen in this loop. And the loop is just going to keep going on until we either stop, hard stop the program or we have some way to get out of the program to break the loop. Now, for most Arduino projects, you do not want there to be some way to break the loop. You want us to continue to be collecting data or doing something or executing something or reading something. So it's almost always going to be in a loop. OK, and uh, so what we're going to do now is we are going to set up a loop that checks the button to see if it's pressed. If we press it and the light is off, it will turn it on. It will stay on until the button is pressed again. And then when it's pressed, it'll turn the light off. OK, see where we're headed here. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to do that with something called an if command. And that if is if something happens, then do something else. And that's exactly what we described, right? If the button is pressed, then turn it on. If the button is pressed again, then turn it off. So the logic isn't quite as clear as that, but I think you'll see it as we go through. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do digital. And we're going to read. And you'll notice it turned red. So that's an in internal command to the Arduino IDE. Digital read. Read the digital status of what? Can you guess what that is? You got it the button pin right what is the status of that button pin is it has it been pressed or has it not been pressed and so what we're going to do to test that is we're going to use some logic here and we're going to say false okay so if the pin is false or not pressed um, now this is where it gets tricky because it's actually in reverse of how the logic works a false is a true statement here because we've set the toggle state to false to begin with okay so if it's false it's off because that's the current state of the pin all right so hang and we'll talk more about logic as we go this is really it's not about programming right now it's more about uh how do we get this thing working for us and then within an if statement you'll notice i have another bracket and now we have another bracketed area so now we've got uh this loop with another if which is almost like another loop in here so those things have to occur so then i'm going to say uh, if it's pressed then we want our toggle state to equal the reverse of our toggle state and then we're going to put a um, semicolon after that so that means whenever i press the button reverse the state of toggle state so let's just talk about no lights, but let's just talk about the logic here. So as we go through the program, toggle state is initially false. Remember that? It's false. Set up. When it starts the program, it is false. We go through the program. If we press the button, then we want the toggle state to be the exact opposite of the toggle state. That's what this little exclamation mark does. It changes it to the opposite. So as we've gone through the first time, what was the toggle state? It was false, but because the button was pressed, it now becomes true. Now this is where everything will start to make sense because now you have a true toggle state because the button's been pressed. Then we're going to go next and we're going to turn or do something with the light. So let's talk about that. How do we do that? So we have our toggle state. Now what we're going to do is we've changed our toggle state to be the opposite of what it was previously. And now what we're going to do is we're going to digital write, and you'll see that's red, so that's actually a command, to the pin, the toggle state right there. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that now we're going to digital write to the LED pin on 12, so the LED on pin 12, the toggle state, which was off originally, button's been pressed, we flip the state of the toggle state, the toggle state is now true or on, and now that button will come on. Pretty clear, right? Yeah, it gets easier, trust me, okay? So now that we've done that, we are back out of this loop. If we've done that, it does this, and then it goes back through the loop. Now. What you would wish is that this would work perfectly. I think what I want to do is I want to compile this. I want to send it to the Arduino and I'd like for you to see what happens as we run this program. And I think it'll clear up some confusion. So here's what we're going to do. Next thing we need to do is we need to take our USB cable. 
okay? And we're going to plug that into our Arduino board, which is right here. So I'm gonna plug that in right here. And you can see I'm just making a mess of everything. So let me get that out of the way. Now I have this really neat uh, extender right here. So I can plug this into uh, the USB port on my computer without uh, having to reach around a computer. Although it is a little, here, let me move this out here just a little bit so we can get this onto the other side. I'm gonna bring this around the camera. Bear with me just a minute. I wanna make sure we get this over here out of the way. There we go. So we're gonna plug this in. And now when we do that, you're going to notice that we have uh, a light that comes on our Arduino right here that shows that it's on. We have one here that shows that it's on. It's showing a transmit and receive because I just plugged it into the computer. Now let's go back up here and find out how we send the program to this device and make sure everything's okay. So going back to our screen up here, first thing we need to do is go to tools. You need to make sure that you've selected the correct board. The Arduino um, IDE has a lot of different boards. You want to make sure for this project, we have the Mega 2560. This project though, for those of you maybe watching that aren't in my class, if you have any Arduino board, this thing will work with any of them. Even uh, one of these little uh, minis or these nanos, you can make this project work with that quite easily. Uh, you don't need that. As long as you've got the breadboard and everything, you're in pretty good shape. The next thing you need to do is make sure that you have the correct port. Now, I'm using a Linux machine, and uh, that's pretty easy. So when I plug in this board right here to the Linux box that I'm using right now and recording on, then it automatically creates this serial port for me. Windows users, I'm sorry, uh, if you have older versions of Windows, and I think most uh, newer versions, you're going to have to go through and install software drivers for that to work. Uh, there are instructions for most Arduino kits that you get, so make sure you do that. There's a lot of resources online. Uh, Mac users, you're in pretty good shape. Uh, Chrome OS users, you can install the software. The USB ports may not be working. You have to use Linux in beta on Chrome OS. It's getting fleshed out and it's getting better and better. As a matter of fact, I'm working on a blog post on how to at least get the Arduino software loaded in anticipation that the USB ports will be uh, available for us to program. But for now, uh, there are some uh, hoops you have to go through. I do have a link in the associated blog, sh blog post for this video that'll show you how to get all that running for you, okay? So once you make sure that you have the correct board, uh, you have the correct port, now we're ready to send the program. And it's as simple as coming up here and clicking the upload button. See that right there? Now I recommend obviously that you save this. So let's go ahead and do this before we go. Let's do save as. Let's just call this button press. And I'm gonna put this on my desktop just so I have access to it. You can see I have a lot of stuff going on my desktop and we'll save that there. So now we have the button press um, program created. And now when we click upload, what's gonna happen is the Arduino IDE is gonna look at all of the code, make sure it's correct, and then compile it and send it as a binary down to our Arduino. It doesn't really run this code, it runs a, a binary code. So let's go ahead and check it. Looks like it's working, I got good, um, um, no errors. And then I don't know if you saw it, but down here, and I'm sure you didn't, when I send it, this T and this X light right here, let me move this a little bit closer, will actually start to blink. So let me go ahead and send it again so you can see how that works. Okay, did you see that? We'll do it one more time. It's such a small code, it, it really doesn't, there you go, just quickly, right? So now, if everything's working, we should see the light turn on and off when we press the button. Let's see what happens. So it's off right now because if you remember, the state is false, right? It's false. It's not on right here in the code. Okay, let's press the button and see what happens. Okay, now notice, notice what happened. It, it kind of works. See how it, it turns on? Okay, now it didn't stay on. Uh, okay, now there it stays on when I click it. Did you notice that? Okay, but here I click it again. It didn't turn off. I click it again, it, oh, it, it turned off. Oh, no, that's kind of random. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If I hold it, maybe I get a little better, uh, but you can see it just sometimes works. So what's happening here is the, the code and the processor is so fast, it can't discern. It needs a little time, it needs a little break in there. 
Uh, we've got to inject a little bit of time for it to figure out what's going on. It's just moving too quick. There's interference with the code between the code and the circuitry. And so we've got to give it time to kind of figure all that out. So what we're going to do is we are going to go back to our code right here and we are going to inject uh, a little bit of a weight in there for the code so that it works. And we're going to do that with a quick little while statement. Um, and there are a couple of ways you could do this. I think this is just probably the, the slickest. And we're going to do while the digital read uh, button pin is equal to false. You should remember that, right? Uh, and then we're going to hit return. You'll notice that it automatically indents. So again, while, while um, that button read is like nothing happening, uh, or after it happens, I'm sorry, after the button press happens while it's false. So we've had the if, but while it is, then what we want to do is we want to delay for 50 milliseconds. That's very short, but it's just enough time for it to discern what in the world is going on with everything. So then what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and save this again, send this back. And uh, what I'm going to do now is upload that. And if everything works, we should uh, once again see the lights over here. If you look down here, we should see those flash. Okay, so now we've got an error. So let's figure out what's going on. It says there should be a token before that. What did I do? While digital read button. Oh, there it is. It's exactly what I talked about at the very beginning. I don't have, you'll notice here in this line, what a great, and I did not plan this, just so you know. You'll notice I have one open parentheses, I have an open parentheses, and when I click on it, you'll know I closed it, but watch what happens when I click on here. There's there's nothing closing it. I forgot to close my parentheses at the end right here. So again, the IDE is very helpful in helping you track those. Now it should work. Let's try it again. Let's try and send it, see if we get uh, some blinky, little blinky lights here. Everything looks like it's working good. Looks like it transferred it. Um, let me go ahead and, you know, I should really save the program again too, make sure I have it. Okay, so now going back to our board, let's press the button and see what happens. Look at that. It's on, it's off. It's on, it's off. It's much more, you'll notice just that little 50 millisecond injection of code slows the code down just enough so it can figure out what the state is of that button. So that's working perfectly. Look at that. That's beautiful. Okay, so we have created a program that will uh, turn the LED on when we press the button and turn it off. Now, let's let's do something um, just kind of fun that you may not know. The Arduino has an LED on board. So what I want to do now is I want to use the button to turn the LED on board the Arduino on and off along with the LED. So this is very easy. All we have to do is figure out what the device number is for that onboard LED. You remember that for this example, for the one that we have hooked up, this one is connected to pin 12 over here. Well, this LED right here, and I'm gonna move everything up here a little bit so you can see, this LED right here that is on right now is on and it is on port 13. So what we're going to do is we are going to move this from pin 12 to pin 13. Now, when I do that, you obviously notice that my light turned off. Oops, what, did I, what happened there? Oh, I pulled out of nine accidentally. There we go. So now remember, this isn't working anymore and it shouldn't because there's no connections. I haven't established pins or anything. So let's go back to our code. We go back to our code. This should be pretty easy for you. You should be able to figure out that uh, now we need to change the pin, LED pin, not to 12, but to 13. So that will fix our LED in our project working in. So let's go ahead and upload that. Come back to our board here. I'm going to move these down and move this back up. I press the button. You'll notice that our light comes back on, but then you will also notice here that our light is on. Watch what happens to this light when I press my button. That one goes off. So now we're controlling both the onboard LED and we're controlling the LED we have plugged in. So if you want to not wire up an entire um, LED project with a resistor and you just want to play around with the LED and code, use the LED built into 
the device, the Arduino, and you, you can uh, code that and play around with it. And again, that's on pin 13. So that's it. Uh, it's a pretty easy project for us. It's a great first project. It's uh, the equivalent of what a lot of people call the Hello World program for programmers, where we do um, print Hello World and we run that program and it prints. The LED has always just been kind of uh, the LED project has just always been that kind of project. It's the hello world of the Arduino. But we added a few extra steps. We put a, uh, instead of just connecting it and turning it on the LED, we said, how about we also add a switch to it? And then when that button is pressed, different things happen. It either turns on and off. So I hope that's helpful for you as you get started with your L Elegoo Arduino kits. I know I had a blast putting this together. Once I've got this uploaded, again, look uh, down at the bottom you'll find a link to a blog post that'll give you everything you need, including you can download the code. I do not recommend downloading the code. I recommend you start typing in the code though. Start working and typing in the code. Make those mistakes so that you understand how the IDE works. It's way too simple to copy and paste code, uh, but it's better when you type it in and learn about it. So that completes this project. Uh, I will probably be back with another project for all of you a little bit later on down the road. Not sure what that's gonna be yet. It could be servos. Uh, it, it may be some other things that will help you push your, your final design projects forward. But uh, again, if you have questions, let me know uh, during class or you can send them to me via email. And uh, that concludes my demo for today.